Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, beloved community, back to another installment of the People's Water Board Water Wednesday webcast. Um, I'm so, so thankful for all of you that tune in every week. This week, my co-host is sick, Nicole, so everybody send her lots of love and good energy, um, and hopefully she'll be back next week. Uh, today, I am here uh, having a really, really exciting, important conversation um, with my new friend, senior attorney with the Natural De Resources Defense Council, NRDC, and we're going to be talking about the Water Affordability Plan Toolkit. Um, I hadn't heard about it, but when I did hear about it, I felt so excited about it because it felt like such a way for people across America to be able to kind of plug in. So welcome. I'm so excited to be having this conversation. The So we're going to start right from the beginning because it's a short show. Um, what What is the Water Affordability Toolkit? Yeah. Let's yeah. start there. So, so we call it the Water Affordability Advocacy Toolkit. And Thank you. What, it, what it really is, um, it's we try to, to, to cover a whole wide swath of issues relating to water affordability um, and to put together in one place um, some context for, for each aspect of the issue, some examples of best and worst practices uh, okay. around the country, uh, among utilities around the country and, and states as well. Um, and and to provide this together as a as a resource that advocates especially um, can use to help to understand uh, what these issues are that face their community where they're still sort of on the learning curve um, and understand how it relates to what people are facing elsewhere um, but also to provide advocates with the tools to uh, to help them uh, push for better policies and programs and protections of where they live by showing them what can be done, what is being done elsewhere, and what some of the, the considerations and complexities are around trying to advance those policies. You know, that's so helpful because it, that work, especially for activists who are on the ground, um, we don't have time to do that work a lot of time, or it takes a lot of time and we don't have the resources to be able to do that work. So it kind of cuts out like some of the hard work that we have to do to be able to um, get water affordability plans where we live, right? Yeah, no, I mean, you really hope it does serve as a resource in that way. And and the content of it draws really heavily on the experience of those who have learned. Impacted through, folks. Uh, the impacted folks who have learned by doing um, and, and drawing on their insights, on their lessons learned, um, on their successes and trying to, to synthesize that, um, but in a lot of detail, um, but sy synthesize that. For people to be able to draw on who, um, who aren't going to be able to, to, to have the time to talk to every person out there who's worked on this right. around the country um, but but hopefully also to, to to end up making connections as well directly um, mm -hmm. but, but this is this is here to serve as a as a resource and people are, are able to use it all over the country right it's something that's right. that that's made for everyone that's right and it, it's focused largely on um, local level policies and policy solutions somewhat on state, not much on federal. Um, but so it's very much meant for, for people to be able to use where they are uh, in, in advocating with their local government or with their local utility uh, for, for better uh, protections from shutoffs, for affordability programs, uh, for improvements in the way decision-making is made and access mm -hmm. to, uh, to having real meaningful input into decisions. Um, and, and, and again, to some extent also those same sorts of, uh, of issues, ways of addressing that through state policy um, and advocating with, with state leadership, state elected officials, state agencies. Why, um, what, what groups got together and created this and why did you guys kind of feel like it was so important? Yeah, uh, so NRDC, excuse me, my organization and National Consumer Law Center um, were the, the two co-authors of the, of the toolkit. Um, NCLC is a national organization that works on um, a whole range of consumer protection issues. And included within that, they have a, a focus area, one of their focus areas on, um, on utility affordability. And they do a lot of work in the energy space, especially. Um, but on the water side, they, they've been doing more. Uh, they've always done some. They've been doing more in recent years as well. 
And so much of what they see and what they've learned from the energy sector is applicable or adaptable to the water sector. And so that was a really great collaboration, I think, that yeah. we had. Being able to bring that expertise in combination with the expertise of, um, of, of water warriors from communities around the country in combination with I mean, what, what I and my colleagues at NRDC have learned through working on these issues over the years. Um, and and so, the, so those were the two sort of co-authors, it was NRDC and NCLC. Um, but then we had um, maybe 15, 20 uh, folks in sort of an advisory role um, who we consulted on what's, what's the best content to make sure we cover to be useful to advocates. Um, and then reviewing content and providing feedback um, to make sure that we've captured the most important things and presented it in a, in a way that's going to be um, it's going to be most useful. And so we had among that group there were a number of folks from People's Water Board Coalition, uh, actually uh, Sylvia Arduino and Alice Jennings, um, oh, the uh, Shiro Parker. <laughs> Wait, so we had uh, a, num a number of folks and folks from uh, uh, the National Coalition for Legislation and Education on Affordable Water, which which is very closely connected, uh, I know as well with People's Water Board. Um, we had folks in other communities uh, working on the front lines on this from, from California, from uh, from Pittsburgh, uh, from Philadelphia, from uh, uh, a whole a whole range of places. Um, and so it was it was a really um, it was a really great experience just putting it together. Yeah, it's it, you know it always does my heart good to see um, a whole bunch of people come together and create something that is going to save lives, something that's going to help us in a time where maybe somebody's hitting a crisis, a water shut off crisis, right? This will help cut off some of that time. They'll be able to plug right into it. And um, and that kind of collaboration and that kind of uh, community help is, it just always makes my heart happy, <laughs> you know, um, and, and to see everybody at the table to make, and certainly to have impacted folks at the table to say, hey, this is what I went through and this is what I had to do, um, what took time and things like that. Um, how can communities use the toolkit? It's um, it seems really user friendly. Like this is you know something. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like something anybody, uh, even somebody just starting off. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's so to speak to, to all levels of these people just starting off, and people who have been working on this uh, for for a long time as well. Right. So it's uh, it's it's posted on our on our website, and I know you'll be sharing the link out with. Yeah, with but it's going to be in the description us. box below, my friends. Awesome. Um, and what you'll find when you go there um, is the the toolkit is you can download it both as like a hundred and thirty page some document with many hundreds of footnotes that are the kind of original sources you can look to for um, you know what these examples are and dig into them what the positive examples are that, that we're that we're drawing on um, but it also it's it's modular um, and so you can download one piece at a time by topic and the way we've got it organized is um, there's there are really three sections or three kind of groupings of topics. The, the first one um, is what what to do, what kinds of policies can be put in place to uh, to protect access to water when somebody's got an unaffordable bill mm -hmm. that, they're, that they're not able to pay. Right, so, so dealing with things like like shutoffs, um, like liens on property, um, dealing with uh, with accumulated debt on, on water bills and how to how to uh, address that so it doesn't become an ongoing and growing burden um, for, for, for those uh, for those households um, it it deals with um, specifically how some of these issues impact tenants differently than homeowners yeah um, and so it's it's a set of issues around and, and billing disputes as well as another one right when there are billing errors that end up leading to outrageous bills that Certainly, people can't pay, and shouldn't be, yeah. anybody shouldn't be expected yeah. to pay. Um, right? Especially and, if they policy. can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, like if they can't. <laughs> yeah. Especially if they can't. But you know, but we see this in talking to folks around the country. We, you know, we, we see this popping up time and time again. Over and over. Um, and and the kind of the customer, the the the, the, the resident, the family being expected to be on the hook for this when it's really yeah. the utilities error. Um, and insufficient processes in place to be able to, dis to dispute those bills and get resolution for that. So we, there's a whole section on policies that can help to um, to address that and, and provide a fair 
process for being able to resolve billing disputes and, and it's so important i mean at some at one point in time here in detroit they they decided dwsd decided that an advocate couldn't walk in with somebody going to pay their water bill like that you know we were also shocked by it because why why wouldn't you want an advocate to come in and and settle these disputes why wouldn't you want an advocate to help with these things and so they that's why those things are so important that's you know do you, are you seeing that across the board like, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I've heard that exact, I have heard that anecdote about Detroit. Yeah. I don't know if I've heard the exact anecdote from elsewhere, although I don't doubt that it may have happened elsewhere too. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly just the, the lack of any clear process or accountability to be able to raise billing issues and yeah. to have them resolved in a, in a fair and objective way. And you know, one, one of the examples we cite of a, of a positive development on that is um, in Baltimore, the, the local legislation that was passed there that mm -hmm. created a an income uh, based water affordability program uh, it also uh, created a position of an ombudsman within the utility yay uh, we love our the, ombudsman to be the to be the interface with residents that's, with customers when they have these issues and to be a, a, a problem solver and and, a, and an advocate mm -hmm. um, and, and to create a dispute resolution process that's um, that's that's formalized um, and then has some accountability. So you know there are there are positive examples out there of places that are that are trying to do better on this. Yeah, unfortunately, we we had to fight tooth and nail for it to happen here, but other municipalities and other states, um, they had it, they had the will to do it. But in Detroit, boy, there was not a will to do it until uh, until the people for years were in the streets and organizing, and that's how we ended up with um, with this uh, with the lifeline plan that we have now, a water affordability plan. Um, which wasn't perfect in the beginning, but we also had to, you know, demand that they have make some amendments to it, that it had to be right so that it was actually serving people. So it was actually saving their lives because we saw it when they were doing mass water shutoffs that people were getting sick and they were dying. Um, people were worried about, you know, losing their kids and things like that. So that's why this these types of things are so important. The urgency when somebody loses their water, especially if it's a place if they're doing it, it, you know, like a practice like Detroit did, where they're shutting off whole neighborhoods at a time, the response, you have to respond like that because it's so it's, you know, it's a life or death situation. That's why this toolkit's so important. Um, really appreciate the work that went into it and all the parties involved in And in, uh, I'm grateful that the People's Water Board contributed to it, yes. too. So are we. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's a, it's a good transition, actually, to talking about what the second section of the of the uh the toolkit is you, know, you talked about the you know, the lifeline plan and and ways of actually getting the bill to be affordable that's the whole second part of the toolkit the second grouping of modules it's about how to make the bill affordable so you avoid getting in the situation where you need yeah. protections from shutoff right um mm -hmm. and where you need debt relief if, if, you, if you can get the bill to be affordable in the first instance um and and really have uh you the debt relief is so most important. Most limited right. where somebody would fall into debt because of some temporary uh, crisis um, that, that may come up in their lives, and, and still a need to address that. Yeah. Okay, so the, this, the second section around getting the bills to be affordable, there's the the, the, the longest section of the entire uh, toolkit is around affordability programs, local affordability and assistance programs, and we are really really careful, um, you know, especially drawing on the you know, the, the the experience and. Um, and advocacy of folks in Detroit, really careful to distinguish between an affordability program and an assistance program. Right. Right. And we sort of describe the typologies of different kinds of programs that are out there, mm -hmm. um, but made really clear that, uh, that that unless the program is designed to get to a bill that is affordable, it's not sustainable. Right. where they are based on their ability to pay, that that's an assistance program. Yeah. And it's not an affordability program. Right. right. And assistance programs, we know, we've seen it over and over and over again, are not sustainable. Um, people, they 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 get help one month and next month they're in, still in the same situation because it's not an affordable bill. We've seen it over and over again. Um, the importance, too, of combining an affordability program with um, with a debt, debt relief program so that you're not expecting somebody Absolutely. to pay. Well, maybe the bill is affordable, the monthly bill. But then you're expecting them to pay back debt that's accumulated earlier on top of that. That's no longer affordable. That they couldn't afford in the first place. Right. Um, so you so you've got to combine those two things. And yeah, you know, I think one of the one of the, the the best approaches that's that's being used is what's sometimes called an arrearage management plan, 
where you get progressively that debt relieved as you pay uh, the the affordable bills going forward. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so for example, over your, over the course of 12 months, you know, each month you may get a 12th of the, the debt um, waived, right? Um, and as you pay, as long as they're paying forward, the the base of it exactly yeah. and and you know, there's experience from the from the energy sector um you know, that that shows that that's ends up being a win-win for the utility sure because um you know that the, this, this kind of debt they're in many instances they're never going to be able to collect on it yeah at least sector. they're getting anyway, something coming squeeze, into the system right right exactly you're trying to sort of squeeze blood from a stone yeah trying to get people to pay by threatening them with losing water or losing their homes which is the most stressful just, thing in the planet and makes them sick and they don't necessarily get over it right away like it, the yeah. mental and physical stress right. of having your water shut off right right if and nobody's so ever if, of, yeah oh i'm sorry. Oh, i'm just saying like if nobody's ever been through it that stress is not something that you get over it sticks with you it sticks with your kids there's no reason the water should ever be shut off i didn't mean to interrupt you go ahead. no no not at all um yeah, that's what this that's what this is all about yeah um yeah and so you know, by 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 providing that a rearage management plan approach um you know, you're then you're giving people an opportunity then um you know to, to pay an affordable bill to not have to worry about that debt anymore and that is actually bringing money into the utility yeah you send somebody a bill they can afford and they pay it the utility is better off than sending them an, an unaffordable bill that they can't they can't and they're not gonna yeah because right. I can't. Um, so the, so this, this, this portion of the, the toolkit talks about those approaches as, as, as uh, part of making bills affordable. It also talks about um, rate design um, that is not specific to, um, to, to uh, discounts based on income. And so what I mean by that um, is, for example, um, rates and the, the light, the, the 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 lifeline rate actually is 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 one example of this. Although in Detroit, it is you do have to be uh, income uh, eligible for the lifeline rate. You do. But another approach to a lifeline rate is to to change the 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 structure of water rates across the board for all customers, or at least all residential customers, and to say the first increment of of usage that's deemed to sort of meet at least essential needs mm -hmm. um, is going to be at a discount of rate for everyone uh, and yeah. just in the in the lifeline rate in detroit that that's the, the progress has been made where that's now varied based on household size yeah that can also be done with a with an across the board lifeline rate mm -hmm. right and then you have for for higher increments of use there's it's tiered where the highest level of use would be the highest per gallon charge mm -hmm. um and you know it's sort of similar to um in some ways sort of similar to progressive income tax you could think it's not that's not quite the right analogy um but it's for the technical term is sometimes uh called an, an, a tiered rate or an inclining block rate okay. um and there are some places that actually do the complete opposite um where they'll charge you less per gallon for using more mm -hmm. um, which ends up having you know high water users and i don't mean like large families with 12 people i mean yeah, like businesses like commercial industrial business yeah ha has, has them being subsidized by residents yeah right um and so so that's something that's just sort of baked into the rate design when when the rate design is not equitable and so there's yeah. a whole section about equitable rate design and what that because yeah, that's certainly not it <laughs> right. um, but, uh, i talk to you about um you know water efficiency assistance right as another way of mm -hmm. keeping the bills affordable we, mm -hmm. we know that that low-income uh families often live in in housing that has older plumbing, plumbing fixtures yeah. Um, leaky plumbing, uh, older um, uh, toilets, for example, you know, a, a new uh, efficient toilet can use uh, a, a small fraction of the amount of water that a toilet that was installed 30 years ago uses. Yeah. And that's the single largest indoor water usage for, for, for residential use generally. And a large part of the bill. And a large part of the bill. Yeah. Um, exactly. And and then we talk again in the section about how these issues can play out differently for, for renters versus um, versus homeowners and, and ways to try to design policies to be able to, to to reach renters with assistance as well. That's why I was really pleased with the statewide bills that we have introduced and um, that they that they actually re they, there's money in there for people who need help with like plumbing and toilets and things like that. 
um, which I think is so important because if you're living in a poverty, the last thing you're, if you can't afford your toilet, if you can't afford a new toilet and to have somebody install it and all of these things, um, then you can't, uh, you know, no matter what, you're going to, you're going to have a high water bill because you're using too much water, right? right. Exactly. Um, and, so. and what you just said about having someone install, I mean, that's, that's the name of the game too, is right. It's not a, not a credit or a voucher that you go take to Home Depot no. and you've got to kind of, you know, you've got to have, you're going to pay a part of the cost of the toilet and pay to install it, or you've got to have the upfront money and get a rebate. Um, yeah. direct, direct install, you know, is again, is sort of the term of art and exactly what you're saying. And, you know, a, a lot of times where there are local water efficiency assistance programs, they're not direct install. Yeah. And so they might be reaching a certain segment of the customer base, but they're not reaching the low income. Right. The people, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's another place where there's a lot of lessons learned from the energy sector because you know, energy efficiency, you know, investments in energy efficiency have gotten so much more attention yeah. from policymakers at all levels over time. Yeah, it's about time. It was weird to me that there was, when I looked through, um, that there was no programs around, around water like they do have, um, like DTE and Consumers Energy and thing in the yeah. the folks here. It's like no protections for people in waters. You can live without electricity. You know, nobody wants to, but you can, but you certainly cannot live without water. So, you know, to have it finally being addressed Um is is so important to me and in, in the work that uh that we all do so it's finally have it addressed yeah yeah absolutely and um you know and then i'll say that the the, the last portion of the toolkit um is is a, a pair of of modules that we uh, we conceive of as as enabling more effective advocacy mm -hmm. so kind of policies that yeah. kind of create the conditions that will help you be effective as advocates mm -hmm. and there's there's two things that we cover there um, one is uh, transparency around data. Mm. Um, and I know that's another bill that's in the works in, in Michigan um, yeah. that, um, that I've, I've had the, the, the privilege to be able to help uh, contribute uh, towards over time as that's evolved. And, and my colleague, Cindy, who I know you had on last week, is, mm -hmm. you know, has been deeply involved in, in, in that one, um, along with People's Water Board and, and, and when the ones that were heard to speak to. Um, but so there's a whole chapter on um, on, on data and transparency and, and ways of, um, of, of getting that data mm -hmm. uh, and of, but even more than that of adopting and, and, and getting policies enacted that will ensure the availability and the, the regular reporting of data mm -hmm. so that policymakers and, uh, and, and residents can understand just the nature and extent of the problem and be able to, to, to design solutions that meet the full extent of the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's just that there's so many data gaps in this space when we look around the country, and it's it's it is something that, that it's not easy to get the with. data just from the water department. It, it takes us so sometimes you have to FOIA them over and over and over again, and they'll still be like, no, we're not giving you that. Yeah. You don't yeah, exactly. you don't really need that. You know, yeah. <laughs> like type stuff. So to already have like that in place in um in a lot of places would be, <laughs> you know. Yeah epically important yeah they're absolutely. not easy I mean, to get <laughs> and so that's why you know getting one approach i think that's the most you know uh, the most promising approach i think um is yeah. you know pushing for state legislation in, uh, in states around the country to mandate reporting of key data that's points right. around shutoffs around rates and bills and liens and and so forth um so that that's centrally available and mm -hmm. can be understood and can be responded to and addressed with um, with real policy changes, mm -hmm. and you know, I've, I've, I've had, uh, had the uh, again, I'll say the privilege of, of of working on legislation on that issue in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we were able to get um, about a year ago um, the uh, the strongest data reporting bill in the nation on water that was adopted in New Jersey, and um, and now it's a, it's it's a challenge to get it implemented. I'll say, yeah. Right, when yeah. you've got hundreds and hundreds of water utilities. Yeah, are, no, no, they water don't want you to water. have that data. They don't want sure. the whole world to know that they did the every day shut people's water off, um, you know, and, and and do such horrific things, right? They don't want yeah, that to know. Exactly. And that's yeah. what we said to them, too. When when we had to keep foying them for things, um, you know, like, hey, this is, the cat's going to be out of the bag somehow. <laughs> you might as well do it now. 
you know, <laughs> rip the Band-Aid off, do it now so that we can get the data and respond to it. And the organizing that goes into that, um, there's a lot of a lot of hearts and minds that go go into that kind of organizing to, to get it. It's important. Yeah, absolutely. And then once you've got that, then that also helps you get more seat at the table. Yeah. Right. And that, which is actually like, I can the, show you the truth right here. Here it is. Yeah, exactly. Which is the, which is the last section of the toolkit as well right. as, as about um, what we call the accountability and participation in decision making. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because so many decisions with water systems are made with no transparency, mm -hmm. made effectively behind closed doors with at most sort of a, you know, sort of a pro forma, you know, public, um, uh, you know, meeting or vote or, you know, if, if that, mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's so much more that can be done to change the way decisions are made That's by right. water utilities around, uh, setting rates around, um, setting policies like shutoff right. policies and, and right. other kinds of protections. There's zero accountability before. Yeah, exactly. It's really um, terrible. So there's, there's, there are a lot of, there are a lot of models that can be drawn on for how to do better. Yeah. And so that's what we really tried to pull together in that last chapter. Well, it's really, really, um, it's a special toolkit. I appreciate the work that went into it. Is there anything else before we wrap up that folks need to know? Um, yeah, you know, I'll mention actually one one new tool that we put out that's that's related to this just um, earlier this year. And, and I had a chance to do a, a, a webinar on it yesterday. I'll, I'll share that link with you, too. I'd appreciate um, it. Is, um, uh, a, a tool that is directed especially at utilities, um, what we call the business case tool for water affordability. And this is this is something that's come out of uh, our work with uh, with Roger Colton, who I know has done a ton of work with people's water board. He's a dear well. friend of ours for sure. Yeah, um, it, was, it was fantastic. It was you know he's worked all around the country on on utility affordability issues, energy and water, yeah. um, and um, you know a, a point that he's made continually throughout his career uh, is in addition to water being essential and no one should be denied the right to water because they can't pay for it, that basic truth, in addition to that, from the perspective of, you know, sort of the, the, um, the pointy headed, you know, sort of uh, financial manager at the utility who's got to figure out, you know, how to balance the books um, and is afraid that if they give a discount that um, that they won't have enough revenue coming in. Um, but the, the business case idea, um, and it's not just an idea, it's, it's, it's been demonstrated through experience, um, is it's basically the point that I said before, if, that from the utility's perspective, if you send somebody a bill and they don't pay it, you're better off sending them a bill that they can afford and they do pay it. Yeah. And so when, so what this, this tool, this business case tool does is it provides utilities a way of actually doing financial modeling saying, if we set up a discount program with these components to it and they can select different aspects of program design, um, they can model, for example, a, a percentage of income rate, uh, or they can model other approaches to discounts as well. Um, although we, certainly emphasize the percentage of income approach being a true affordability program. Um, but they, they can, by inputting a, a bunch of utility specific data around their customer base and the income distribution of their customer base around what the, the current uh, rates are, um, around what their current collections um, uh, rates are from their customers, a whole series of things. Um, the, the tool will, um, do financial modeling of what are the financial impacts going to be on the utility of how much revenue the utility takes in with a discount program versus without one and of what costs to the utility are avoided like doing fewer shutoffs right uh, costs the utility money to send a truck out and do a shutoff if if they can avoid those costs and improve their collections from low income win -win. customers it's a win-win right and and the, the tool enables them to really actually quantify that and so we're getting um, we're getting a lot of interest in that. And I had you know, we had co-presenting yesterday on this webinar uh, someone from the um, the water utility in Cincinnati, Greater Cincinnati Waterworks, and they're using this tool right now 
uh, to help them develop a, a program, a low income discount program. That's great. And they're, you know, what they've, they've found surprising results when they, yeah. when they start doing this modeling, but it's, um, there's a payback on it. Yeah. Um, providing these discounts that it's not, if you give a, you know, if you give, um, a uh, hundred dollars off to, you know, to a thousand people, that doesn't actually cost the utility a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Um, yeah. And and they and they when they actually kind of can see that how the math works on that, it really changes. Um, That's exciting. And how to and how to think about it. Well, I'd love to share that with uh, with our community. If you do share it with me, I'll share it with folks. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, anything sharing... that can help. <laughs> absolutely. And, and and while it's it's a sort of data heavy tool that, that that is best used with a lot of utility specific data that the utility would be the holder of, mm -hmm. advocates can use it and take it to their utility and say, hey, <laughs> right. we want you to use this. Let's yeah. use this as the basis for a conversation. Uh, let's and, start here. Let's start here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I do think it's going to be I think both toolkits, especially the um the water affordability advocacy toolkit is going is really going to change people's lives. It's really really important work. Thank you so much for doing it. I appreciate you, and I appreciate everybody that contributed. Um, it's uh, it's really really important work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show. Um, I'd like to thank our behind the scenes tech person Angelica. Uh, for doing such a great job on making sure that we we are uh, we show up and you can see us and hear us every week, and um, yeah, and to all of our listeners out there, thanks for tuning in every week. Try to look out for each other in these difficult times, and try to stay afloat. Bye. Be careful, homie. You spilling it. <laughs>